Hi guys, I'm Justin Davis, a Salesforce consultant. I help people with the various aspects of Salesforce. Hi, I'm Debbie, a sales head. Our company has decided to implement Salesforce to manage inbound leads and follow-up reporting. We will be trained on Salesforce shortly. Well, that's good. I believe it will also help them in their career growth. However, I'm struggling to understand how Salesforce will help us to manage inbound leads and other aspects. You know, Debbie, that's an excellent question. Companies looking for managing inbound leads and follow-up reporting are slowly moving to Salesforce for automating this process. Most sales teams are challenged with managing inbound leads, including assignment, logging activities, and follow-up. The leads object in Salesforce allows sales managers to assign inbound leads from websites through lead assignment rules. The activities object allows for the reporting of tasks such as outbound calls and events such as in-person meetings. Lastly, reports can be created to display closing rates and average length of sales cycles. Great! I can't wait to get started. To get started, the first thing we're going to talk about here is the leads homepage. The leads homepage is used to view lists of data, import leads, transfer leads, use the mass email leads tool, as well as mass add leads to campaign. So if you can see over here on the right hand side, this is a screenshot of the leads homepage. And now we're going to jump into Salesforce and actually see the real thing. So I'm logged in here and you can see I'm at the homepage. So to jump to the leads tab, I'm going to click on leads. And then as you can see here, this is the leads homepage. So there's a, usually a lot of confusion about what exactly the homepage is for specific objects because you also have this home tab up here. Each of these tabs across the top that actually point to different objects are actually have, they actually have their own homepage. So if you could see here, it says leads home. Just to be very, very clear, this is the leads homepage. So just to sort of peruse this, you can see that we are looking at recently viewed leads. You can also look at recently created or unread leads that maybe were assigned. Um, you can also see different reports down here, such as the lead lifetime report or leads by source. And then down here, you also have tools such as import leads, mass delete leads, etc. So we're going to talk about the tools first. So if I click on this import leads link, it's actually going to take me directly to the data import wizard. And so later on in this course, we actually talk about importing data. But for now, you just need to know that if you want to quickly import a list of leads, you can jump to this leads home, home tab here and, and click on that import leads link. You can also mass delete leads. So let's say you do an import of leads that you actually want to end up deleting. Again, we're going to talk about this later on in the course under data management, but it does take you directly to the mass delete function in Salesforce. The next link down here is the transfer leads link. So if I click on transfer leads, I can actually do just that. I can transfer leads from one user to an active user inside of Salesforce. And the filters for this are very similar to the mass delete. Um, essentially, you can, you can choose what leads you want transferred based on the different criteria here. Then you click find and you can actually transfer those over. It's not a commonly used feature in Salesforce, but it is important to know that it exists. The next one here is mass email leads. So this is a, a pretty popular option. So if I click on that, it'll actually take me to the mass email uh, tool in Salesforce. Again, this is something we'll talk about later on. But in short, I can click on go here and it's going to show me a list of all the leads I have in the system. And I can click next and I can, you know, step through the different steps of sending a mass email, which we'll go into later on. Um, but essentially, that's what that's for there. And then down here last, we have the mass add leads to campaign. So what we can do is actually select a campaign and, and add those leads to it. We'll talk about this later on when we talk about campaigns. But uh, you know, from the leads homepage here, you have access to all these tools. The next thing we're going to talk about is creating contacts on those specific accounts. So the features of a contact are quite simple. This is really what you know CRM systems were designed around from the beginning. They store information on individuals. You can log interactions such as tasks and events. You can also sync them with Outlook or Gmail. You can also do that on leads, but it's primarily done on contacts because you know the contacts that you have are you know the actual individuals you really want to be talking to. So 
we're going to jump into Salesforce again here and we're actually going to create a new contact. So we're at my Truck Parts Inc. account. So now I'm going to click on the new contact button. So I'm going to click new contact and I can actually type in who I want that new contacts, what I want their name to be and click save. And it's real simple. It just simply creates a new contact record. Then I can come over here and actually fill in that individual's title. Um, you know, I can fill in any other information relative to them. But if I want to jump back to an account, I can click on the account link and do so. Now, I only have one contact on here. So if I want to, I can come over and, um, you know, add another contact. Let's say Tom Cruise here. So it'll, it'll save and reload this Tom Cruise contact. If I click on the account name again, it's going to bring me back and show me that now I have two contacts. So the idea is, is that you will have a running list of contacts associated with an account at any given time. The next thing we're going to talk about here is creating products. Products in Salesforce are, you know, really records for you to track, you know, the products you're selling or the services that you're selling as well. So it's meant for you to create a, you know, really a catalog of all your products and services. You add them to opportunities and quotes for in-depth reporting. So what that means is, you know, when you go to view a report, rather than just seeing a customer name, a date, and a dollar amount, you can actually see what products or services were quoted along with that, you know, opportunity. You can also create custom fields, for example, for cost reporting. So you can actually have a field on products for, you know, your cost. So that way you can go back and run reports later on and say, well, you know, my cost for products, you know, $40, we sold it for $100. And then you can get a quick report from that and say, well, there's a $60, you know, spread or a margin on that specific product. You can also rename products and call them services. You know, funny enough, 80% of America, you know, is service based, but you know, every CRM on the planet calls them products. So you can actually go in and rename products and actually call them services and use them in the exact same way. And for example, that quantity field, that can be for hours. If you're like a time and materials type business, then you can also, you know, have a quantity there for the number of hours. And then you use the dollar amount to be what that hourly rate would be. So that's sort of a neat workaround for those of you that work in, you know, professional services, for example. So now I'm actually going to jump into Salesforce and demonstrate creating a product here. So I'm going to click on this products tab. And, you know, this page can be probably one of the most confusing tab homepages that there is. You have the ability to see price books by list. You can see product views. You can also see asset views. And essentially um, what assets are is if you've got a customer that makes a purchase, you can have the products that they purchased added to their account as assets. So that's what that's about. But for the purpose of this specific lesson, we're going to click on this new button. So you need to scroll down a little bit. It's not obvious. You need to scroll down and click on the new button here. And then you have the ability to add a product. So here we're going to put, you know, widget 2000 and, you know, 2000A, let's say the model number. We also have some other fields where we can choose, you know, product code. So we're going to choose a product code here. And then we also need this to be active. Now we have the ability to just save at this point, but um, you know what you should do is click on save and add price. That way you can complete you know the the creation process. Otherwise, if you don't, you're not going to be able to add that product to a specific you know opportunity. So for the standard price, I'm going to put five thousand and then click save. Now what happens is it takes you back to the product page. You can see your product name, you can see the product code, and that it's active. Well, you might believe that you're done, but you're not. Now you actually have to add it to a price book. So a lot of you might consider this to be a redundant step because why would you need to add it to a price book if you've got a standard price on there? Well, exactly for all the reasons that we mentioned when going over price books that you may have a product that you sell for you know a different amount to different individuals. So for example, here, what I'm gonna do is click on this add to price book button. And I'm going to choose, um, you know, an active price book where I, which I can and click select there. And then this is where price books differentiate between products. So you have this standard price of $5,000 for this product. 
Now, I can just check this checkbox and it'll just grab that standard price and add it to the price book. But in this specific case, maybe I want to change it to be, you know, 2000 and then I want to save. So what I just did is whenever this widget is added to an opportunity using this price book, instead of using that $5,000 standard price, it's going to use the $2,000 standard price. So that gives you know users and managers the ability to say, I want specific pricing based on you know certain scenarios. So again, you can you can add those price books to an opportunity and then grab products you know on a per price book basis. So so that's what that's for. And now you're done. So you've created the product with the product name. You have a product code and it's active. Make sure to check that active checkbox. You've added the standard price. And you've also got the list price here on a per price book basis. So the next thing we're going to talk about here is creating opportunities in Salesforce. So opportunities in Salesforce, as I mentioned before, allows you to track your sales and potential sales and also forecast on them. So what I mean by that is you can run reports and see what opportunities are scheduled to close based on their close date and dollar amount, as well as any stage information. You can also view reports of products and any discounts you have, and then report on win rates and sa overall sales effectiveness. So what that means is if you have you know, 100 opportunities and 10 of them get closed, then you can say, well, we've got a 10% you know, win rate on those opportunities. So an opportunity in Salesforce is really there for your your salespeople to manage their pipeline if you've got any open proposals or open quotes those would all be opportunities in salesforce so now we're going to jump into salesforce and actually create an opportunity so i'm logged in here i'm back at the home home tab um, what i need to do is start by clicking on an account so um, on this account record, I can actually click this new opportunity button. You can also create an opportunity from the opportunities tab. So I can click on that tab and click new here. The trouble with that is that you, you do need to link it to an account of, of some type most of the time. So I do recommend navigating to the opportunity record from the account. That way it's automatically filled in. What I mean by that is I can click on new opportunity and that account is already filled in there. You certainly don't have to do it that way. That's what I recommend. You can just create it directly from the opportunities tab, but um, you know, a lot of times there's confusion over which account was used, and if there's accounts with similar names or duplicate names, you might actually link the opportunity to the wrong account. If you use my method, then you know, you're going through the account, and so it's linked, and you know it's a sure thing. So at this point, I've got a couple of different required fields here. So I've got, for example, like, primary contact and you know referred by so I'm just going to fill those in and click save so I can keep on moving through so if you look here this is exactly what I was referring to by filling in those fields you might have you know multiple records associated when this happens you need to click on this lookup field and then you need to actually you know manually select which particular contact you're talking about and then click save so once you click, click save, uh, your opportunity is going to be saved. And so what happens, what happens there is, you know, you're looking at this opportunity from a viewing perspective rather than edit. Over here on the right hand side, you can then do things like, you know, adjust the dollar amount. You can also adjust the stage or the close date. So for example, here, I want to change the stage to proposal. I want to change the close date to, let's say, you know, December 31st, and I want to save. So here what, the, what this means is that you've got a couple of required fields. So if I click edit again, you can see that, you know, close dates required, stages required. So what would happen if I then remove that close date and try to save? You would see that it's a required field. So the close date is another area in Salesforce where, you know, a lot of Salesforce customers are confused or they're not exactly sure how to use it. Really that close date should be the actual close date or the forecasted close date. And you know, if, if, if it, it would be great if there would be some way to rename it to be, you know, forecasted close date before the opportunity was signed and then the name changes to actual close date once it is signed. Salesforce doesn't do that though, but that's essentially what it's for. 
if the opportunity hasn't been signed, hasn't been won, then you need to choose a close date that best represents when that will happen. And for a lot of sales teams, you know, it's sort of impossible to pinpoint a actual an actual sales date. So, you know, best practice might be to just make it for the last day of any given month. So if you think this will probably close in February, just make it for the end of February and just choose the last date of February. Or if you think it's going to be, you know, today, you can make it today. But, um, you know, a lot of times sales teams will, choo- will choose and forecast based on the month. They'll say, well, I think it'll close next month. Just make it for the last day of that month. And then when sales managers and owners go to run reports, they can see a forecast based on, you know, month that nobody's going to look at a forecast on a per day basis for most industries. So all that matters is what month is it going to close? It really doesn't matter as much as far as the specific date goes. Now, when you go to actually mark this as closed one, for example, that's when it matters. So when you get you know a signature on the dotted line, you need to make sure that the close date is reflective of when it was actually signed. So here, for example, I'm going to click save and then, you know, what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to save as, you know, closed one as well as the close date. Here I'm being prompted to choose a project value. So here I'm going to choose 500 and then click save. So now you can see that I've got a closed one opportunity for $500 on today's date. So, um, you know, it's really, it's really simple as far as creating, you know, an opportunity record itself goes here. Now, let's say on my opportunity here that I actually want to add products. I can, I can do that by scrolling down and clicking on add product. I can then check, you know, different check boxes and click save, uh, select here. And then I have the ability to actually choose what cro- quantity I want to have these products listed on the opportunity. I can also adjust the sales price, the date, any, anything else like the line description. And then at this point, I can click save. And then what will happen is those products are then added to the opportunity. Now, if you look here, I can no longer edit this amount field. Even if I click on the edit button, it's going to be locked. And so what happens is when you add products to an opportunity, it locks that amount field. And so you can't change it unless you have, unless you, you know, remove these products from the opportunity. But it's very easy to add those products and then you can go back and run reports on them and all of that. So, um, you know, essentially that's how you create an opportunity as well as adding products down below. Now, when I clicked add product before, I didn't, I wasn't prompted to choose a price book. Now, if you have more than one active price book, you will be prompted. But if you only have one price book, you won't be prompted. So, um, if you're in a business where your pricing is sort of streamlined, then, you know, you'll never be asked which price book to use. But again, going back to that retail versus wholesale, wholesale scenario, if you've got more than one price book, you'll be prompted to choose one. And then the products and the pricing will be, you know, made available to be added to this opportunity likewise. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.